Right, part two. We're going to have a look at the um, different ways, different configurations or algorithms for controlling the stepper motor now. Um, I put up on the slide about anti resonance, its implications, and the different drive circuits. And we may find a need, if we look practically at this, at some of the drive circuits. But I'm leaving that really as an area where you could possibly do some research for your assignments. Because it mustn't be that I give you everything. Um, otherwise, you won't be studying at level six. So this is, this is just a, an introduction anyway. So, moving on from that, stepping motor. <coughs> different modes of stepping will give us different step angles for each clock pulse, for each time we say step round. So, there's three different general ones, the full step, the half step, where it goes between coils, that's like the reluctance drive um, one, and then what's called a micro step um, style. This sum diagram looks a little complex and is probably a little co more complex than I want to show, okay? But for the time being, ignore the PIC microcontroller, all that is doing is, is making the decision to energise the coils in the order we want them to to go round. So it's got a program in it that's going to step through the right sequence changing these outputs here so these are the outputs from the motor drive to the A, A dash, B and B dash coils on the um, stepper motor and as up here is showing windings, whether they're um, energised or de-energised. So we're going to go through a four-step process to see how this configuration goes through a complete rotation of 360 degrees. First of all, we look at um, making the uh, A terminal go high. So we're going to energise A, that means the current's going to flow through that coil and A dash is low and therefore we create a south pole on A and we pull the motor around one step. So that rotor's gone round from being north at the top to have a north on the right hand side. So that's the first step in our sequence. And effectively here what we'd say is at these outputs for step one we are O, 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 one in terms of logic or when we say one we mean we turned it on. second step is that we turn off um, A and we turn on B. That energises the B coil because B dash is at zero so a current flows in that direction, puts a safe pole at the bottom and pulls the rotor around another 90 degrees. And here, this configuration here now would be O, O, 1, O. Oh, it's mirrored over here anyway. So that's what the uh, microcontroller is asking for and the uh, motor drive output will reflect that. So the idea of the motor drive here is it's going to take low voltage, low level signals from a microcontroller and allow it to switch the much higher currents that are required by the motor. It wouldn't normally have the motor directly connected to the microcontroller. And then this slide, I've got the whole four step sequence shown in one, making it a little bit easier to see um, what's going on. 
So there's our one on the A, pulling it round 90 degrees north pole to the right. Then we put the one on B, south pole on the bottom, north goes to the bottom. Then we put the one on A dash, so we got a current going through the A coil in the opposite direction to what it was before. And that puts the south pole on the left, pulls the route around so the north is on the left. And then finally we return it to the start position by putting a one on the B dash coil, turning the A coil off. And that finishes off the sequence. So we go in this sequence here, 1 naught naught 1, naught 1 naught naught, naught naught 1 naught, naught 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 1 on the output ports. So it's like a step and a 1 through a sequence of 4 and then back to the start again. And if you keep doing that repeatedly, this motor is going to go round and round. Albeit in this simple, simplified version with only one north-south pole in the rotor and only four poles in the stator, it's going to go 90 degrees every step. It's going to run a little rough if we had a motor like this. And the stepping sequence is like that where only one coil, as you can see, there's only ever one coil turned on at a time. The A coil, then the B coil, then the A dash coil, then the B dash, then the A again. Sometimes termed a wave drive because that's what that diagram looks like as a wave going up and down, up and down, up and down. So that's one way to do it. Determining the speed, number of steps per revolution, 360 degrees over the angle for one step. So if you want to, if you want to, num uh, if you want to know how many steps it is to do a revolution, you know what angle each step is, you can quite easily find out how many, how many steps it is to go round once. And that might be important to you. If you've got to move a certain distance, you're going to want to know how many times you need to pulse it to get it to move that certain distance. So, for example, if your degree is um, like we had, 90 degrees per step, we're going to get four steps per revolution. Number of pulses per second we can get from what the desired RPM is, revs per minute, we divide that by 60, so we turn it into revs per second and then multiply that by the steps per resolution and that will tell me how many steps um, I need, how many pulses per second I need to get it to go at a certain speed. As an example, if we want it to go at 120 RPM, we divide that by 60, multiply that by the 4 steps per revolution, we'd have to pulse eight times a second to get the motor to run at that speed with that configuration. Yeah. Not particularly difficult to work out. I think um, you probably could have done that anyway. Simple thing. So, second type we're going to look at is what's called the um, full step two phase on bipolar control. So this is still full step, okay? But what we're going to do here is going to energize both coils at the same time. What this does is, for the same step size, is double the torque. But Danny, I'm going to ask you, what's the disadvantage to that? What else is it going to double? The current. The current. Yeah, so it's going to draw twice the current from the controller than it would if you're just energising the one coil, 
of the first configuration. So this will give you more torque, but it draws more current overall from the controller. So what we're doing here is we're in this first step, we're going to energize um, the A and the B terminals are going to go high, the A dash and the B dash low. We get two south poles on the um, motor and we get two norths. So the rotor aligns as per the diagram. So that's with 0011 on the outputs. To step at round one, what do we need to do? Put current on A dash, B dash. If we put current on A dash, B dash, we'll turn these two green and them two red. We're going to go around 480 degrees if we did that. Don't you think? Keep B charged. No. What we effectively want to do, if we're going to pull this moat around to here, yeah. 90 degrees, we're going to need to make that a south pole and that a north pole. Mm. So what have we got to do? They're both Sorry. related to the A coil, yeah. so we've got to reverse the polarity of the A coil. We've got to turn off A and turn on A dash. Yeah? yeah? Let's have a look. Turn off A, turn on A dash. So that's moved the magnetism. So again, that's like this rotating magnetic field, really, which is what an inductance, AC inductance motor works on, three phase, in a way. But this is in steps rather than smooth. It's not a sine wave. So the next step after this would be... Turn off B and turn on B dash. Yeah, turn off B turn on B dash because we want to move this south pole up to there. To get a south pole we need current going in don't we? So we put the current in there, we're, we're going to reverse we want to make this one a north and that one a south so we're going to reverse the polarity of the B coil. And there it is all in one the third step has got the B coil polarity reversed and then the final step is to reverse the polarity of the I coil back the other way again. And if we look at these output um, configurations they go 1100 followed by one. No, o, o, one, one, o, 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 one, one, must be one, o, o, one. So if we if we write a program in a microcontroller to step through so that their outputs changed in that order, we get that motor to rotate around. But still full step, that's going, the motor's going 90 degrees, this two, two pole rotor is going 90 degrees for every step in the, in the program. But what we have got, because we've got both coils energised at the same time, we've got twice the Holden torque. So in essence that would hold more load for the same motor, um, and also stop quicker. This is me thinking now. I'm not an expert, but that's, that's my way of thinking. That must stop quicker, or that will stop a bigger load, and that will hold a bigger load. No change in the motor construction at all. Just changing the way we're switching it. Alright with that, Danny? Yeah? yeah. Good.
Right, and there's the full step two phase on voltage sequence. And you can see that in that one, you've always got two coils energized and the movement is created by changing the polarities. See that's polarity switching all the time. So it's almost AC if you think of it in that sense but we're switching it with a digital square wave style in square wave style fashion. Last thing we're going to do is look at half stepping. Combines one phase on and two phase on algorithms. It's got eight steps to it because of that. And it improves the rotational resolution. So if you've got a, what's saying there is if you had a um, six degree per step mover and you switched it this way you get three degrees per step because you're half stepping up but it, it, it requires more hardware we're going to be using all eight outputs of the motor controller because of it no we're not we're going to be using eight steps though okay so with this configuration where we start is with just the A coil, just the A terminal of the A coil energised. So we get a south pole on the right hand side. So our port um, B, that's this one here, the output port is 1 naught naught naught. And I'm writing that there because this up here is a bit small. Okay. And that's our first step in the program. Energize A. B is at nothing. Second step, then, is to do is to go to the double energized mode. Where we don't so what we've done here is we've gone from having just I energized. We've left I on so there's our I on, we've left that on and we turned on B as well. So we've gone from 1000 to 1100. Two coils energized, that was one coil energized. Yep. And then the third step has us switching off the A coil but leaving the B coil energized. So going through them steps in good old step picture fashion you can see that router going round but it's going round half a step at a time if I line them up properly that would be quite good wouldn't it? Huh? first step, second step, third step and this one has gone so we've gone 1000, oh, oh, oh. we've gone 1100 oh, oh. O one O O Step one, step two, and this is the step three. Coil's gone round so it's right at the bottom. So there's that one full step from here to here of the full step mode. We've put another step in between by combining the double, dual coil, single coil energization. So you're going to be, you're going to get get a modulating current with this coil.
been drawn for me, the, the controller, sometimes twice as much as um, other times. And the full seat or part, the full sequence almost. This is this is actually my step. That's going to be step eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Yeah, it's got the B coil on only. So this is the B coil energized only. We then energize the A dash coil as well. Then we turn the B coil off. Then we energize the B dash coil. Then we did energize the A dash. And then we energize the A. And the next step is back to where we start.